Hey everyone, so let's talk about console CPUs. Whether we're talking about PS4, Pro, Xbox One, or the upcoming X model, they're all based on AMD's Jaguar design. X86 processing cores originally designed by AMD with mobile in mind, but kind of expanded out to do more things. Their quad core clusters in the PC space and in consoles, well, they doubled them up and paired them with far more capable GPUs. In terms of hardware balance, it's hilariously skewed in favor of graphics and just wouldn't work as a desktop PC, but somehow, well, in the console space, it's produced some pretty remarkable results. The question is though, where do we go next? I'll be honest, I'm not seeing anything other than a return to AMD for the true next-gen consoles from Microsoft and Sony, which means more custom APU processors, but crucially with Ryzen CPU technology. But first of all, let's talk about hardware balance and why it's important. So this is Grand Theft Auto 4 on Xbox 360. It's a great example of the hardware balance we had on the last gen systems, where CPU had a much stronger focus. And yeah, obviously I'll include the PlayStation 3 cell processor in that as well. In fact, there's a strong argument that the GPU was underpowered by comparison to the CPU, to the point where Naughty Dog's amazing PS3 engine actually hived off a bunch of GPU post-processing to the cell. The bottom line though, the CPU's main job is in simulating the in-game world, the physics, the animation, the AI, on top of setting up instructions for the GPU to process. Whether we're talking about GTA or the likes of Assassin's Creed, the point is that this level of simulation fidelity was on a different level compared to the prior generation. Games have obviously got prettier with the move to the PS4 and Xbox One, and game worlds have got bigger owing to the 16 times increase in memory. But the core simulation, yes, obviously it's better, but did we ever see a true generational leap there? Okay, so let's return to GTA 4 there. Rockstar's open world is phenomenal. And here's its direct predecessor, GTA San Andreas. Now that was great for its time, but there's only a fraction of the complexity. We never got a similar leap on the current generation, pretty much from any franchise. And that's all down to the choice of CPU, pretty much because AMD had nothing else viable at the time. But that's not to say that developers haven't tried to push the envelope, it's just that the CPU CPU has kind of got in the way, even when games were built around their capabilities. Now Just Cause 3 is a case in point, an open world title with advanced physics where the game just can't keep up and not even PS4 Pro's boost mode could brute force that to its target frame rate. Battlefield 1 and its 64 player online mode? A daunting task for the CPU for sure, and yeah, moving to PS4 Pro helps a lot, but it's still some way off the 60 frames per second target. Perhaps the most interesting misfire is Assassin's Creed Unity. Now I actually rank the PC version as one of the most visually spectacular, ambitious games you can play in the series, but the console release is tanked hard, certainly in performance terms. Now we can tell that the CPU is the issue here because PS4 Pro's boost mode effectively got the game to hit its 30 frames per second design target. But the sobering reality is that it required an extra 30% of CPU power to get the job done. Resources that Ubisoft could only dream of when the game was released in 2014. So what happens now? Microsoft has customized Jaguar for Xbox One X, so we get a 31% bump in frequency, and from what developers tell me, there have been some substantial tweaks to L2 cache to bump performance there. But it's still a CPU of the same generation, and the same fundamental limits are in place. Now for the next generation, we're going to need more. Otherwise, effectively, we're going to be looking at similar games again with the same limitations. Perhaps better thanks to more memory, but still with the same ceiling on simulation complexity. But thankfully, Microsoft and Sony do have something better available. They have Ryzen. We know it's going to be integrated into APUs and four cores with eight threads is definitely the plan for the PC space. Well, I decided to check out a quad core Ryzen to see what kind of generational leap we might get. So I took the Ryzen 1700 here. It's an eight core chip with four cores per CCX. Two CCXs in the package. Any decent motherboard BIOS will let me disable one of those CCXs. And I also limited clocks to three gigahertz. 
Okay, just speculation on my part here, but Ryzen is designed for maximum efficiency at lower clocks, and that's a more likely target for a console. In choosing 3 GHz, I looked at what Microsoft had done with CPU clocks on Xbox One. 28 nanometer, it went for 1.75 GHz. Then with the move to the newer 16 nanometer process, clocks improved by 31% to 2.3 GHz for the Xbox One X, and we saw the same percentage bump between PS4 and Pro. The next consoles will almost certainly be on the next big process jump, so I'm anticipating another 30% bump in frequency. That takes us up to 3 GHz. My tests here are CPU based in nature, not really graphics, so I used an overclocked Titan X Pascal at 1080p to ensure that the processor is our key limiting factor. Yeah, if we want to talk about anticipated GPU power in the next gen consoles, well that is another video entirely. Let's dive in quickly first of all with The Witcher 3, a game very much based on current gen constraints, targeting 30Hz on consoles. Took a while to get there in terms of patches, but yeah, CD Projekt Red hit its targets eventually. In general gameplay in the open world on the PC version, our Ryzen candidate moves north of 100 frames per second, a 3 to 4x improvement even before we factor in processor-specific optimization in a fixed box like a console. Remember, we're using code here that was never designed with Ryzen in mind. Game makers code to the silicon in a console. It's one of the key advantages the boxes have. In our CPU busting Novigrad City benchmark, we're still at 80 to 90 frames per second or thereabouts. Now you might notice some nasty frame time stutter on screen and in our graphs here. That's exactly what happens when you're CPU bound. In actual software, things will be much smoother. You'll either be GPU bound or hitting a frame rate limit. So it's really not anything to worry about. Just Cause 3 next, a physics showcase that is horrifically CPU bound on the consoles. So yeah, check out this comparison of PS4 Pro's boost mode stacked up against the base console. Whether you're talking 18 frames per second on the standard unit or mid 20s on the Pro, it's not acceptable. Everything maxed out here on PC and in a worst case scenario, we're in the high 50s. So well over double the frame rate then compared to Pro. And again, we must remember that the CPU will actually be doing a lot more work than the console versions. They have the benefit of stripped back graphics APIs that reduce the CPU burden. The PC versions have to wade through DirectX 11 to get the job done. On top of that, I'm running the game at max settings, meaning more things being drawn and more CPU overhead in setting that up. Finally, let's return to Assassin's Creed Unity, this time on PC with our Ryzen setup. Okay, so this is actually a really important title. It was clearly conceived and designed with very different consoles in mind than the machines that Microsoft and Sony actually delivered. Ubisoft doubled down on a design that stressed the CPU. The detail of the world dramatically increased, meaning more setup costs on those processing cores. And then it populated that world with more NPCs than we'd ever seen in the series before, and indeed since. The CPU has to stream in their appearance, the assets that make up their clothes, their animations. It has to execute those animations, process physics while carrying out everything else that is happening in the game world and telling the GPU how to draw it. It's a staggering undertaking. However, with our setup with Ryzen in general gameplay, we can easily hit 80 frames per second here, but it's the more intense world simulation aspects I'm interested in. So check this out. We're mostly north of 60 frames per second, but there are some occasional dips beneath. By and large though, yeah, even with everything ramped up to the max settings, typically we have three times console performance. And something else I'd like to talk about with AC Unity here. This is a 2014 title, really a first gen release for PS4 and Xbox One. We shouldn't expect it to be the finished article, more a taster of what we would have come to expect from the console generation to follow. But because of the profound CPU limitations the game hit, it never happened. But what if the processor was strong enough? Factor in the results we're getting here with years of evolution and just imagine what might have been achieved. Current gen console titles evolved in a very different direction, but with a more potent CPU, an entirely different type of game experience could evolve. So after all of that optimism, now it's time for a bit of a reality check. 
What happens if we compare our prospective console Ryzen with some Intel PC processor equivalents? I've equaled RAM speeds as best as we can here, and the sobering reality is that, well, a 3.2 GHz i5 6500 canes this downclocked Ryzen in the AC Unity benchmark, which in turn trades blows with the Core i3 6100 and the Pentium G4560. And this is kind of funny, bearing in mind that you need the Pentium or something better to match or beat current gen console performance in most games. So I think the main takeaway here is that we've actually been holding our Ryzen back by running titles that aren't best suited for this new architecture. And that's something we've actually noticed in our reviews of the desktop Ryzen parts. Bottom line then, we should expect more, much more, simply because developers will be focusing 100% on whatever CPUs we get in the new console. When that's the case, magic happens. I mean, this is Horizon Zero Dawn, possibly the best looking open world game on the current generations of consoles. On a base PlayStation 4, you're looking at 1080p, 30 frames per second, using nothing more than a couple of mobile CPU clusters paired with GPU hardware equivalent to a Radeon HD 7850. So overall then, when you consider that, along with the results I've seen, plus the likelihood that we'll be on to second generation Ryzen cores by the time the next consoles come about. Yeah, I'm really excited about the possibilities here. Maybe we can move beyond prettier graphics alone and push towards more advanced simulation as well. 2019, 2020, that's when I think we'll see all of this bear fruit and it should be fascinating. But for now, that's where I'm gonna leave it. Please do like and subscribe and follow us on Twitter for the latest Digital Foundry updates. And yes, please consider supporting the DF Patreon if you enjoy what we do. You'll get high quality downloads of everything we produce and bonus goodies on top. But for now, from me, thanks for watching.